Okay, welcome back for this afternoon session. We're going to have two lectures, uh, the first one by Luca De Biasi, who will introduce in a second, and also the second one by Maurizio Borghi, uh, a law professor, uh, right after the, the break uh, at uh, 3.30. Uh, Luca De Biasi is, um, uh, besides being a trustee of the Nexus Center, is a, a journalist and a writer. Uh, he has been following topics uh, connected with innovation and the digital revolution for many years now. He is the founder and director of NOVA, which is the innovation weekly of the Sole 24 Ore in, uh, in Italy. So he has been uh, covering with NOVA and outside NOVA many, many topics uh, ranging from startups, uh, innovation uh, in the public administrations uh, and the internet economy, etc. And uh, he's a good friend. And today he's going to talk about today going to talk about his latest book called uh, Homo Technologicus, uh, which is uh, what is being human and uh, Homo Technologicus uh, is for engineer and to call Homo Pluralis, which means uh, what is meant to be human being in, uh, in this technological age. And uh, so it's going to be a sort of an introduction on the topics uh, of this book, which is published by Codice Edizioni, which is a publisher based here in Torino. So thanks a lot for giving us the invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Uh, this is a very special day because for the first time, Juan Carlos has made a mistake. So as I never saw him make. This means that he is human and also plural, as, as I write. Um, well, it's not about the book. Uh, I mean, it's about uh, the research that I'm doing that is sort of blocked in a book, but is continuing. And I would like very much to you for you to help me in going ahead. And uh, so, first, th first thing to say is. Whenever you want to say something in any moment of this sort of lesson, I say lessons, quote unquote, because I'm a journalist and I usually ask questions more than making lessons. Uh, anyway, uh, when, whenever you want to say something, ask something, do it, there is no problem. Uh, and uh, it will be the real thing if you do it. What uh, I've been thinking about since uh, some time is uh, uh, linked to the, the sense, the feeling that people is uh, becoming more aware that they need to look ahead. It's not very much a surprise in some countries, but in other countries like Europe and Italy, it's really uh, news. Uh, I have been uh, looking at innovation uh, since 20 years, and before I was an historian, and I'm always being a journalist in the meantime, uh, paying my studies, writing articles. Uh, so what happens is that we felt that something very important is, is, has, has been changing and is changing, and we switched our uh, point of view from looking at things that change as something that change and then uh, we go back to normal to a situation in which we feel that change is not going to stop. Uh, in a way when there was industrialization uh, and uh, people went from some kind of beautiful country village to a very hard city to work for in that industry. 
they sort of lost something, but they went to work there because they were sure that they would be better off. And they, their son, their daughters, would be better off than them. Uh, here in Turin, you, people had this experience uh, during the 20 years that made Italy an industrial country. You remember Italy was, after the Second World War, uh, inhabited by 60% uh, uh, of people working in agriculture. 60%. In 20 years, only 10% stayed in agriculture. And the rest went in the city and worked for, it, for industry. But it was strange. When those 60% uh, changed life, nobody told them they were going to lose their job. Uh, they knew what, what, what was next. It was to go to the city and be able to have a car, have a, a wage, uh, children at school, uh, holidays. This was understood and everything spoke about this change and explained the change. Now we are in the same, in a similar situation and uh, studies say that 47% of uh, present jobs will disappear for, because of change of, uh, of technology. But uh, the difference is that nobody understands very well what will be done next. There is no city to go to. There is no other situation. Yes, you can go abroad, but the world is one big city. Um, and you don't really understand what's next. And so the very important question that everybody is uh, trying to answer is how do we look ahead? Um, and this is the general motivation of my research and uh, it's not done in a university and with proper uh, 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 instruments so you will do much better than me. I just ask him people and looking at things and asking questions, uh, reading and learning from this kind of uh, situations. Um, and one thing they are, that I understand is that uh, asking questions is the best uh, thing that humans do better than uh, machines. And this is the way I look at things. So how uh, can we deal with this big change? And uh, what do we have uh, as instrument, intellectual instruments to look ahead? Uh, given the fact that uh, forecasting has failed, uh, the Economist says, uh, which is a magnificent uh, newspaper, has written that uh, economic, economics is the science that uh, studies why its forecasts fail. Uh, I think this is very interesting. We have, we have lost faith in forecasting. But at the same time, we need to know more and more about how to deal with the future. Uh, we lost faith in forecasting because forecasting is not able, it, it's epistemologically unable to uh, understand big shifts. It's very clear. It, it's done by uh, projecting history towards the future with the model uh, that you use. Um, 
And as Nassim Taleb says, what's interesting is what is not expected. I'm interviewing a lot of people about this. Uh, even in insurance, insurance companies where they deal with, with risk, they are understanding that something fundamental is changing. And uh, the changes, the following, as was told me uh, by an Alliance guy that uh, uh, works uh, about the study of risk. We used to be, they say, they say uh, able to deal with the risk uh, in terms of uh, what we know that we don't know. We know things that can happen, but we don't know which will happen. Now, our problem is that we don't know what we don't know. Which is very interesting, it's very nice to say, but it's also a, a big problem for, for them. Uh, for example, they are trying to understand the impact of uh, the uh, driverless car. Uh, that is, uh, in, in their scenarios, is going to um, uh, diminish the risk for the first uh, part of the introduction because driverless cars they have less in incident accidents than uh, than cars that are driven uh, <coughs> by uh, humans that can drink, can uh, look at the smartphone while they drive and that kind of stuff. Uh, but then, when risk of accidents will be low enough, they will lose their business because they will not be anymore the business of dealing with, with risk. Um, and they just understood this kind of idea uh, that they didn't know that they didn't know. What happens is that there are many ways to look at the future without uh, having uh, real models and uh, data about the future. Uh, but we need to absorb that kind of culture. Uh, I read one sentence from the Institute for the Future, which is in California, and uh, the, 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 their idea was uh, very well written in terms of uh, uh, the following. The, the first, the major uh, law of future studies is that there are no data about the future, no facts about the future because those facts didn't happen yet. Uh, so, there are no facts about the future, no kind of understanding and science based on facts is going to work uh, to look at the future. There are no facts about the future, only, there, there are only narratives. Narratives. Which is uh, one way to look at what I'm trying to tell you today. We understand that uh, a lot of things changed in the last 20 years, but we also have the feeling that much more is going to change in the next 20 years. If you go back with uh, your mind uh, and if you have the age to do so, you go back 20 years, how many remember 20 years ago how it was worth? How many of you remember the word 20 years ago? How many? You don't remember? The rest of you don't have any memories about the word 20 years ago? Yeah? Somebody told you about the fact that uh, I don't know, the United States were doomed, they were uh, Japanese, they were going to take the power of the economy in the world, that uh, there were no cellular phones, there was no SMS, uh, the internet was only for some uh, lucky professors, uh, 
I don't know, the, the world was still 5 billion people. Uh, and uh, if somebody looked for you, uh, they called you, you were not there. Nobody knew that they called you and that you were not there. And you were not obliged to call back because you didn't know and everybody knew that you didn't know. Uh, and there are many other things like this that change. Uh, of course, uh, many people felt that this change had, had uh, created problems and uh, opportunities and we see how many opportunities there were for people who understood the change. And this is the very important thing. Understanding the change was the only way to live through change. Uh, finding the way to make the most of opportunities and not losing what you were, uh, not only being put in crisis. Uh, the same, we think, can be said about the future ahead. And uh, with an hypothesis in mind that what will change in the next two, 20 years is even more important and more challenging than we lived through uh, in the past 20 years. You know better than me about artificial intelligence like Watson that uh, uh, has won Jeopardy and demonstrated that computer is able to think very well about questions that are very hard, ambiguous and difficult to deal with. We are looking at driverless cars. We see that uh, um, Forbes, the weekly online newspaper, uh, uh, financial newspaper in America, is writing all their articles about the financial market daily, not using journalists and no, not using humans. They use narrative science, which is a software. <coughs> software gets the data, gets a database of phrases, and creates articles which are perfectly uh, readable and uh, not laughable and uh, very understandable and done very quickly. Um, so some, some journalists think that this is a problem for their job. Uh, this is going to be used uh, uh, in sports and that's very clear. Even in sports, many data, phrases which are sort of regular, repeated phrases like they won, the, that kind of stuff, and they put together uh, articles <coughs> without humans. And um, as I said, 47% of uh, intellectual jobs are thought to be uh, in danger uh, of uh, disappearing because of this kind of machines. Um, so what kind of uh, uh, understanding we can have about can we have about uh, what these things will generate uh, remember the Institute of, for the future said there are narratives what are narratives they are not stories it's not storytelling it's much more it's a uh, narrative is a sort of mindset that creates the way in which we interpret facts in a direct direction. Uh, first big, huge narrative that we see is the financial markets narrative. Very important. What happens if you live in a world that you describe to yourself with a narrative, which is what we all do? Uh, we decide, we choose by looking at facts and interpreting them 
uh, with a perspective that goes in sync with the narrative. For example, if you think financial markets narrative, you will think that profit will prevail, competition will be the way uh, we, will, we will select the good and the bad. People will are rational and if they are not rational they are losers. Uh, big companies need to be free to do whatever they want because competition creates the best uh, allocation of resources possible like uh, in the Leibniz uh, world uh, that kind of stuff as you know in financial markets this narrative has created cho has, has created choices that are there to see the 70% of uh, exchange is automated there is no human related to uh, deals on the financial markets for the 70% of deals uh, it's uh, algorithm just to give you uh, news uh, maybe you already read it but there is a venture capital company in Hong Kong uh, that uh, decided to uh, have on board of their uh, board of directors an algorithm with, along with the, the other humans because they rely so much for deciding, deciding what to do uh, on that algorithm that he is part of the, me the, 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 the is member of the board they decide with him uh, but the uh, whole set of financial markets are uh, working with automation much more than we feel. Um, just to make you understand, it's, it's very fast. If you are fast, you win. If you are not fast, you lose. Uh, and it's so much fast, that is 20 uh, thousand faster than uh, the uh, neuron, the human brain neurons uh, can exchange information. Um, and uh, when Milan, the stock exchange of Milan, uh, was merged with the one in London, uh, the Italian traders thought that they were going to stay in Milan and deal with the financial market from Milan. But the time that, that was needed for uh, an order to start from uh, the server in Milan to go to uh, London was so long that they lost all the deals. And I assure you, as Quintarelli has told you, that uh, orders on the internet go fast. But it was not fast enough. Those that had the servers in London were faster and they won all the, all the deals. So they, they had to go with the servers in London. So that kind of uh, speed is unhuman. And the whole set of the logic of the, of the financial markets is, is difficult to, 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 to understand in human terms. Uh, if you have re read the book by Soaring uh, that is called Too Big to Fail, uh, it's nine, 900 pages about uh, the crisis 2007-2008 in, in America. Uh, you read 900 pages of interviews, reports, direct information and uh, discussions in boards of big, big banks all over America. And this guy that were thought to be the masters of the universe, the chairman of Goldman Sachs, Mary Lynch, that kind of thing, they were all, all saying during 900 pages that they couldn't do anything about the crisis. <coughs> there was nothing that was in their power that they could do to stop, to do something, to cure the, the crisis. The crisis was automatic, was unhuman. 
was not controlled by any human. Of course, you can say that there was those that created the logic of the automatic situated uh, machinery that creates these financial markets, and those the, those guys were humans. And this is the whole point. They decided to create that kind of algorithm, that kind of logic, because they were uh, in a narrative that explained them what to what was best to choose. So even then they were not free to de decide what kind of algorithm, what kind of logic to create. They were interpreting a narrative with their choices. This is a narrative. It's something longer, it's a frame by which we interpret the word and uh, by which we decide. This kind of narrative is creating an idea of uh, uh, automation that is related to the improvement of profits uh, generated by investing capital. And when you have a possibility to uh, switch from a $10 worker paid $10 for, for one hour to uh, a machine that you pay four dollars for a one hour you will decide for the machine so this narrative is telling us that we will have uh, a world in which only capital will gain and only uh, and workers will lose and in fact some kind of things like that are there to be seen and the new machine age the uh, McAfee and uh, the other guy that has a very difficult name to pronounce uh, have uh, shown that uh, uh, productivity and the, the job creation went in the same direction for the whole 50 years after the war and uh, only in 2001 2002 they they diverge productivity continues to grow job creation doesn't grow and that kind of fact it can be interpreted in the way that I told you capital is uh, substituting work work because that creates more profit. That narrative gives the, the way to decide what's best. Um, and so the idea of <coughs> machines that go and work uh, substituting uh, people uh, is there and it's possible in this narrative. But it's not the only narrative. There is another another narrative. Of course, somebody is criticizing this conclusion by saying that if all goods are produced by machines, 3D printers, any kind of thing, uh, and robot, ro robots and uh, software and that kind of stuff, if all goods are made by machines and all money goes to the 1% and the rest is without money, nobody will buy those goods. And so the situation could go uh, in a problem, which is quite understandable and reasonable and very interesting. And it's linked to the vogue of uh, 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 giving back that many rich people in America are, are using to live the last part of their life like their kids. Uh, giving back seems to be the way to deal with the fact that money concentrates 
concentrates in the 1%. But that, that's the kind of narrative we have. Another kind, kind of narrative is technocentric. And it's about uh, the idea that uh, technology will solve problems that uh, previous versions of technology created. It's something that all of you know. Uh, I've been uh, asking uh, Bill Gates about uh, Windows 98 and he was very happy to tell me that uh, Windows 98 solved 25,000 bugs that were in Windows 95. Uh, so in three years they created a new version that solved 25,000 bugs of the previous version. That kind of uh, uh, thing should be funny and should make us consumers angry. You guys sold us uh, a thing with 20,000 bucks for a million dollars, but it was normal because the narrative is we have problems, but technology will solve them. That kind of idea is very substantial, uh, like the financial narrative. Uh, because uh, it happens that it's very true in many situations. The Moore law that, that you all know is one kind of uh, uh, description of this narrative. Every 18 months, the capacity of elaboration of computers will double with the same price, at the same cost. Uh, Moore's law. There are many other laws, for example, the Metcalfe law that you all know. You all know the Metcalfe law? You're sleeping. What, what is talking about this guy? Are you there or uh, you, you, you want me to switch subjects to something more attractive? Like uh, uh, today there is a, a soccer uh, team, national soccer team that will uh, play the game. Um, now, I say uh, this kind of uh, uh, narrative is, uh, is used by many uh, people that say we have a version of technology that creates problems and uh, we will make this technology better in the future. Uh, one of the technology that, one of the kind of technologies that we are using very much is uh, the network technology, this kind of technologies like Facebook and other things. And uh, these are uh, described by the uh, Metcalf law. Metcalf, Metcalf law uh, says that uh, uh, a network technology will, uh, the value of a network technology will grow exponentially with the number of users. This means that the technology that it has more users will necessarily win against another one that has less users. When, for example, the whole thing of the social network started, uh, there were a dozen of different social networks competing. The one that won uh, became the only one. We lost sight of MySpace, Friends, Twitter, and many others. Uh, and uh, only Facebook survived and became the only social network, the social network. If you want to compete with the bigger uh, network, you need not to be better than him technically, you need to be in another category. So, uh, at that time, the only thing that you can do in a social network, in the social network category, is to improve the social network that you have. If you want to do something new, you need to create something that is felt 
to be in a different category. For example, when they started Twister, they didn't think about social network at all. They, they thought about a machine that was able to send SMEs, SMS without uh, uh, a telephone. In America, they use less, less the cellular phone than us, and they wanted to uh, have an SMS uh, system by via web, and they used uh, they had this kind of idea. And only after some time, people, users, created the Twitter that we know by using those SMS, uh, not to tell things like SMS uh, say, but to send uh, links to things that inform each other. So it became a sort of uh, uh, way to spread news and other things. Um, and this is a differentiation uh, in terms of uh, mindset by which we understand the Twitter that makes it not directly in com competition with, with Facebook. This is um, uh, the, the, the <coughs> law. We understand the future that comes out of uh, an innovation, technical, in a technological innovation, by looking at this kind of laws. Uh, they are observations. They are not laws like in physics. They they are practical observations. But they are really good to understand what will come out of a new technology. If a new technology is doomed, you understand it very well because it is exactly the same thing uh, it does exactly the same thing that technology uh, already does but the technology that is installed has an importance and a capacity of uh, 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 defend itself that will make the new technology that does the same things uh, unable to compete. Only things that are in a new category can win their space. Uh, and it happens that this creates a sort of uh, uh, narrative that uh, we can describe in terms of uh, uh, singularity uh, so that uh, the idea is that machines that are used by humans to think together uh, are becoming so much in, uh, 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 functional and able to help us that we are less and less able to do without them. Uh, and our imagination is going to be uh, influenced by this. Uh, our life is going to be influenced by this, our intelligence is going to be influenced by this. Um, it's, it's very clear that uh, this is rational and factual. I mean, this is a, a part of, a, of my body, it's not a, an instrument. Uh, the Supreme Court in, in the United States had, has said that uh, police cannot search the cellular phone because it is part of the human anatomy. The Supreme Court is not, it's not bad. Um, so, this is part of my body, and uh, the environment is also enriched by uh, information. We live in an environment that is not natural anymore. It's, uh, uh, enriched by information. We call it infosphere, and if you heard Luciano Floridi, you know what it means. Uh, so, this kind of uh, narrative looks at my body becoming more cyborg, uh, the environment becoming more infosphere, uh, more and more, and uh, machines growing in their capacity. Uh, that um, somebody says that in, at, at some time in the future machines will be so much more able than us to think that we will 
uh, decide to become part of them. And this will be uh, the day in which a new species on the world uh, will, will, will be able to uh, take the place of the humans. Well, of course, these are narratives. Uh, and we understand these narratives uh, when they go towards their uh, maximum synthesis as being narratives. But when we are, in, we are inside of those narratives and we see the world as those narratives tell us to see it, we take choices that are made by those narratives. If we think that the market, the financial market, is the way to understand what is true and what is right to do, then we will make choices that go towards the possibility of creating exactly the story that that narrative, narrative is, uh, is telling us about now. Um, and the same, the same happens with uh, the techno-centric narrative. If we think that that is the idea, we will make new technologies to solve problems that old technologies created, then we give our life to that kind of narrative. That kind of narrative becomes the master of our life. Uh, and, it's, and it's very interesting that there, there is not only these two narratives, but there is another one uh, that is also very interesting and uh, uh, fascinating. And, and that's a sort of narrative that I would call ecological. Uh, we are talking about a lot about ecosystem in, of innovation. And that is not by chance. Because the system in which we live uh, and that creates innovation and it's uh, creating new things, new ideas, new behaviors, uh, looks like an ecosystem. It's understandable with the same narrative that we use with the nature of ecosystem. It's a competition for survival. It's a mutation of uh, ideas. It's um, uh, it's much more. It's much better if there is biodiversity or infodiversity. Uh, it's much less rich if there is only one culture and everybody do the same that does the same thing. Uh, that kind of stuff makes us think that. Uh, it, it, that the way we create uh, innovation looks like an ecosystem. And we use this kind of wording because some of us are inside the, another kind of narrative. The narrative uh, that comes from ecology. The idea that uh, we need to have different, different, different dimensions uh, of the human experience and the natural, natural experience to live a quality life because uh, we are not only a node of, of, of a network, but at least we are nodes of many different net networks. We are uh, a, a single individuals, but we are also groups. In fact, psychology says that we are, we, we, we are born two, and only later we become one because my mother is part of me for a long time. I don't, I don't separate the two identities and the, I only separate them when I become myself uh, in, in, a new, in a new way. But then I'm, I'm individual, I'm part of a group, I'm part of a mass, I'm part, and there are all different uh, uh, consequences of these different dimensions uh, of which I, uh, I am part at the same time. <clears throat> and at the same time I am 
uh, doing things that happen now, and I'm inside the time that has a longer uh, duration. Uh, we are sitting uh, and not uh, uh, sitting on a chair and not sitting uh, on the ground because we repeat this kind of uh, behavior since 2000 years. Uh, we, we live in a time that is plural. There are things that are very long, things that are quite uh, short, and things that happen and disappear. We are at the same time in the plurality of dimensions. As an individual, as a group, as a mass, as a person that lives now, and, a, and as a person that lives the same experience that were uh, lived by people many years before, or centuries before, or millennia before. And this kind of uh, plurality of uh, experiences that we live at the same time uh, becomes uh, a need. I will never be happy if I'm only one thing. I'm just a node of Facebook. And as you see, Facebook doesn't need us to be many things. If we are on Facebook, we are only that node. And we behave to win the competition for likes using those five instruments that Facebook gives us. If we want to be plural, we need different platforms uh, that work at the same time with different logics, with different uh, structures of development. In an ecosystem, we can think that if now uh, we use Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Google, we can always think that somewhere some new kind of life is growing and uh, will create a, a solution to a different dimension that it's not satisfied by what we have now. This is an ecological idea of development of this situation. You will say, well, financial narratives are much stronger than the ecological uh, or technical. Uh, and that's true. It has been very true for the last 30 years, but I'm, I have the feeling that uh, they, they, they created so many crises that uh, some people will think differently and is thinking differently. The ecological culture about the environment has been born uh, in the 60s while everybody was thinking that industrialization was going to be the truth forever. Um, and um, pollution was just some kind of externality that we needed to deal with, to, to deal with later. Uh, but the real thing was industrialization. And those that were protesting about pollution in the 60s in Italy or in Europe, they were the freaks that didn't understand history. History was going towards in, in, in industrialization. And uh, uh, those that were worried about pollution, they were just out of history. In 50 years, this kind of idea has changed uh, in many ways and with many experiences, we understand now that uh, quality of environment is part of quality of our life and it's uh, something that we cannot uh, renounce. Also, we understand that my individual behavior means a lot for the whole and the whole means a lot for me as individual. Those were 50 years, and the idea of ecology has completely changed, and it's become much more spread, and even 
uh, I could say that everybody has a sort of understanding of this. So my guess is that uh, the same thing will happen in the infosphere. We are polluting our minds, uh, but uh, we are protesting about that. We are criticizing what happens, and we are going to develop new things that help us create an infosphere that is much more sane and uh, equilibrated. This is possible. It's a narrative. It's a different narrative. Why not? How it, it, you, you go from a narrative to another? How societies decide a narrative or another? Uh, what are the things that we can hope about and uh, give our life to? These are my questions, and that's an introduction to what I've done. Um, so now I, uh, I would like you to, to intervene in, man, in any kind of way you want if you're not sleeping. Is, who is sleeping? Raise your hand who is sleeping. Nobody's sleeping. So, can we do it together? Because you are. PhD students, you know much more than me. I want to learn from you. So, I created this kind of idea of instrument to look at it in, in a partial way to the future in this hour. What are we going to use these things to? Is this credible? Is this completely wrong? Is just a journalist, journalist garbage? What, what, what is this? Use, useful for. Um, you are going to work, you are going to, cho to, to choose what you do, you are going to decide. The only thing that we know about the future is that it is the consequence of what we do now. That is clear uh, and simple to say and simple to understand. <laughs> The problem is to understand what are the consequences of what I do. But the fact that the future is the consequence of what I do is clear. So, to understand this, we need narratives and uh, we can improve very much on what I, I told you uh, together, if you want. If you don't want, I can go ahead. You don't want. Who is building computers with, in, in, your, in this class? Who is building new uh, software? You. Uh, do, do, did you feel any, in any way uh, described by my second narrative, the technocentric narrative? I will solve. With the new technology, it will solve problems that the old technology has created. At the moment, I see another economy of scale in the cloud computing, since they were But uh, I'm, I can't uh, think of that. I don't have a view, such a big view as an additive. I don't know what, what our, the technology is doing us. I only know that maybe this, this kind of, uh, of society based on profit maybe won't be possible in the future since the people uh, lose their work and uh, society is based on the profit and we need to do something else because otherwise uh, there are few people that will get richer and richer. But I don't know, I don't have an answer. Yeah, yeah. What, what I was asking is, uh, how do you decide what to do with your ability to write software? How do you decide, decide. what decide, choose uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to do with, your, with the ability that you have to create software? Mm -hmm. How do you, you, you just, people tell you what to do when you do it, or you, do, you, you decide? You have an idea about open software, yes, uh, private the software? Yes, technical point, mm -hmm. just to improve the software, yeah. to make it work better. To make it work better, yeah. <coughs> yeah. 
And so, uh, how do you choose the people for which I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm asking you questions like this, but how you, you choose the things that you want in, to improve technically by uh, speaking with people that will sort of pay or ask you to, to, to improve a special technology. How do you choose what kind of function technology you, uh, you, you, you give your life to? Because it's giving life, huh? it's, it's, it's our time, it's, it's our life. We give our life to what we do. So how do you choose... Uh, the question is, uh, you, you could uh, write a software that uh, uh, improves the way, the ability of a pilot to uh, drive a car or uh, to make a word processor easier or to browse uh, the web or how it happens that you choose what kind of uh, aim it has your software. It's just people that come to you and you do whatever they ask you to do? I have the same situation. So I'm developing an Android application for you, yeah. which I created the hardware. Now we should measure the humidity and temperature, some physical data and transfer to the application Android. So in my case, uh, it was like a part of my PC. I had to do the uh, hardware and also the software. So it was kind of a suggestion from the professor. Prof yes. yes. Yeah. And the professor was asking that, and you I correctly do, yeah. do that. Uh, that. The professor was dealing with a demand of uh, software like that. Yes, I simply trust him and uh, do sure. it here. And, uh, yes, exactly. That's it. And that's correct. That's what you need to do. That's the way we deal with society. Yeah. But then, uh, all you have done has uh, improved the, pla the right platform and the idea of, uh, that is behind that. Yeah. And this is, it happens all the time. I'm, I'm a journalist, I work in for a newspaper which is owned by the Industrialist uh, Association in Italy. Uh, and the whole thing that we need to do is to uh, stay independent, but we are uh, dependent from from them to, to have a job and uh, have a newspaper. So it's con a continuous uh, uh, deal to be ourselves in a system that wants different things. Um, that's why I think that in, and in a newspaper it's easy to understand that everything is, is there to, to be understood. We know who owns what, we read who are the journalists that are very much pro-owner uh, and those that are not. We, 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 we read everything like that. But in a system that creates new technologies or in a system that does financial newspaper, uh, financial markets, uh, technologies, uh, we, we don't see very much what happens. It's too complex. The individual freedom is so small that nobody thinks that it can make a difference. Uh, and that is a problem. That's what I told you. The, the masters of the, the president of the big bank during crisis, they cannot say they can make a difference. They cannot, they are not able to stop the crisis, to do something completely different. That is strange. Who In my view, the, yeah. Who can, sorry, sorry. Who controls that, that case, the owner of the banks or the... In, as I see things, the, the there is no cop, there is a logic, there is a Frankenstein, there is an automatic uh, body that creates a logic. And the logic is followed by everybody. 
which is not the end of the story, but I would like to stress this kind of idea. Why do you do the reason of this behavior to the technology? I think a soldier in the Roman Empire made a, book, uh, a war without understood the reality why he made the war. I think a lot of people choose a presence maybe by vote without understood the reality why he would. I think a lot of people don't have a, a level of culture or restriction for understand the world. And uh, also we, we are engineers, but we don't have the level of culture for understand the, all the world. I, I am a mechanical engineer, I understand mechanical engineering. I don't understand the computer or some okay. kind of thing. I think there is a, the problem is the world is too big for a single person. Absolutely. So I, when I go to the doctor, I belong in the doctor, of course. He told me some things and uh, I take uh, this log and uh, for me it's not a problem of technology. Maybe technology made an uh, explosion of uh, the possibility to tell stupid idea or uh, as but, much, like I said. But I think uh, in the in the past uh, there is a uh, the part or the bar to tell stupid idea. Yeah. It's, not, it's the same things. It's a That's different a way for uh, the same things. I I think a lot of speakers in these courses give a problem to the technology. I think the problem is not the technology. The problem is the human. Exactly. Also, the, the technology is made by human. All the science is made by human. So Absolutely. I think the problem is the human. As, and so, if the problem is the human, it's not a problem because we are made in this way. And so, it's not possible to change. It's not possible that a single human change a lot of human. It's not a revolution. It's a... I'm going to start from. One people, Push, I guess. If one people try, is not a revolution. I'm to be stuck. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that, that's uh, in a way the whole point that I was making. It's not the te technology; it's the narrative. Yeah. The way we understand the world, the way the way we na create a vision of the world, that creates the cage, the the freedom, the ability to look at opportunities and the ability and the inability to look at opportunities. Uh, I, I don't like uh, this world. <laughs> I don't uh, really. I don't like this world. I hate to wake up every morning, go to work, uh, come back. I hate this world. But I am here, and so I do these things because, of course, I must do this thing because without money, I cannot. Life and so I don't love this world. I survive in this world. My point is exactly this: this, this. something is going wrong. Uh, as exactly like uh, something was going wrong when we were dealing uh, and giving all our lives to industrialization. Our environment was devastated. Devastated. Uh, since uh, 20 years in this country, forests are growing. Something has changed. And it was first in the mind, then in technology or in organization, the market and everything. So I... Yes. There was a popular uh, narrative in the 80s uh, that we were uh, leading to a new uh, that that made middle age that we are living into a new middle age and there is a clear demand on slowing down the fact of the environment uh, could it be uh, 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 feasible to narrative 
exactly. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the powers of the world lead society to pre industrial standards of environmental exploitation, preserving technological power for a few people. A new middle age. New age. A, a new middle age. A new middle age, right. Well, would it be feasible? New middle age, well, it, it's... Uh, Simply return to pre-industrial yeah. of exploitation for most population and a technological advance reserved for a few, for a few people. Yeah, well... Yeah, middle Ages make me think of something that uh, is it's quite interesting. Uh, but let me tell you, that there were many narratives about the future uh, inspired by the new mi Middle Age. Uh, and it was all motivated by a big war, big catastrophe that created uh, such a different world that the new world was organized like in the Middle Ages. Uh, so every narrative that went towards uh, a lower stand economical and uh, material standard started from a sort of catastrophe. I don't, I don't, I don't say about a lower, a really low stand, but a point where uh, you can go ahead with growing because of uh, no resources available. Yes. But uh, stay in a certain uh, level of technology. Stay at, at the, at the sustainable. Degraded, degraded, yeah. this sustainable. That's exactly the point. So if we think how we can switch to a system that needs to grow that, to a so, so, system that, that is equilibrium. That was the, the, the situation in Europe before discovering America, discovering before yeah. the Crusades. So right. Yeah. Uh, a closer world, a closer environment. As maybe it will become third when we have not how to explore it more. Yeah, it, it's it a closed a, system and it's going to be equilibrated. It doesn't grow, it doesn't uh, go down. It's equilibrated. Maybe. And that's, that's, that's possible. Huh? Yeah, we are not discussing, we are not criticizing the, the basic system, the economical infrastructure, yeah. the political infrastructure. There is not equilibrium in a cap capitalistic world. No. The, capital, the financial markets uh, are not able to work without growth. Because they are based on, a, on the interest rate. In the interest rate, you can only pay if there is growth. But there is no way. The, the, the financial narratives work only with growth. An ecological narrative can work with different kind of equilibrium. And that's clear. That his point is correct. When you said that the big uh, boss of the bank is saying that uh, he, he can't uh, can do anything on the, on the crisis. Probably I can, I could trust him. Yeah. Because when uh, I, I don't want to cite Max because it appears to find him more or less, but uh, if, if we, uh, no, not sure, but uh, Max will be uh, uh, If we accept this uh, system, this capitalistic system, is we have to accept that uh, technology means growing, growing in the production, growing in the consumption of the resources. And uh, <coughs> sorry, but I'm, I'm losing the, the point, the final point. But uh, if we do not uh, criticize, we do not dis discuss this uh, this system. We have to accept that uh, that there is this cyclic uh, return this phenomenon. We have to accept this. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that uh, we can speak. It is, I, I think that uh, it's uh, interesting to, to, to have uh, this uh, kind of discussion. But we have to start from the base. We are discussing about the, the future of the technology, about the growing of the internet, the platforms, but we are not discussing on the starting point. 
and I think that it is wrong because we have to change the base if we, if we want to discuss possibly different possible futures. That's that's uh, that's uh, that's very right, but it's uh, uh, the same thing that industrialists told me when I protested about pollution in the 60s. They said, this is the basis of our system and we need uh, not to deal with pollution because it's a cost that we cannot pay, so somebody else will pay. And that was the truth in their narrative. It was the basis of the system. After 50 years, industrialists that uh, present themselves as sustainable, they lead, they, they win. They, 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 not only they don't have more cost, they have less cost and more sales. Because people understand that they do the correct thing. So the, the very basis in the 60s was completely different uh, of, of the same basis now. Now we have three, three narratives in competition. But the we base, also the base didn't change. Huh? The base didn't change. The, the economical sector more or less is the same. The, the economics of? The economical infrastructure more or less is the same. You think so? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I see a lot of difference over okay. there. Maybe I'm saying to him, I don't think the social system is now the same as before, mainly because now we can have industries that flourish selling absolutely nothing. Because they don't have cost. For example, you see big companies like Amazon. What is the cost of Amazon? Like, they basically take a lot of sellers, they gather them together, make a few split, and basically the person that is selling you is starting to do the business. So Amazon gets a part of the division and they spend so, there's many instances now that we can grow, spending absolutely nothing in respect to the products they sell because they are pressing pressing services. That's exactly very interesting because if we look ahead, uh, we, we could compare, compare, compare Kodak to Instagram. We can do that. Kodak had 150 uh, thousand people working for them and they failed and cracked. Instagram had 12 people and they sold the company for one billion dollars and they have no production at all. It's just software. Uh, the same we can say about Uber that has a uh, uh, capitalization in, in, in the stock exchange of 40 billion dollars. And they just, uh, they have no cars, no drivers, no anything, they just move information around. And uh, Amazon, you're right, they, they spend a lot uh, in terms of hardware for the cloud, but it's nothing in, yeah, right, right. Facebook, they, they spend in computers, but uh, they also make a lot of money on any uh, individual that they have. I mean, they have so many individuals that they make a lot of money, but every individual for Facebook uh, means eight, nine dollars of sales in one year. And they have profit on everybody of two dollars per year, in, in the whole year. But they have one billion three hundred. And the other thing I was going to go like try to comment or argue, is a sense that uh, you were talking before about the uh, new dark age or whatever is going to come or whatever. The things that the one thing that's actually important to know is that facing history and human history, the one catalyst for every single change, the menu change in has always been war in the sense of the war. For example, for example, the women's suffrage movement. The women did not gain any suffrage movement with the suffragettes during the whole 19th century. But 
well until the actually look quite the places that were the slide and method were hacking in the first world war. That can get the political power in order to get the Soviet intervention power, for example. Yeah. So many years many examples like that. In the sense that yeah. war is the kind of socio-political performance. I know war is always been a very game, big game changer. But my my point about the ecological narrative uh, is different. It didn't it didn't need a war to become majoritarian in terms of uh, behaviors in Europe, in the States, and in many places all over the world. Uh, it was just a cultural improvement. It it just passed through minds, experiences. They were. Uh, crisis. Uh, Chernobyl, Fukushima, they are crises, like wars, for example, in a way. But the real change was mainly cultural. Yes, but what is the real change? In Italy, the people don't want nuclear, but by uh, electric. Uh, it's yeah, not a real change, it's if, not if, in my garden. Yeah. If France people die for nuclear, for me it's not a problem. So it's not a real change. I don't want, a, or a lot of people don't want a new power plant, uh, gas or carbon, and the user car for made uh, one kilometer. So it's not a real change, it's a, a mode change. Is a is a like a model. Fashion. It's fashion. Because if I don't want a nuclear power plant, I don't want to buy electricity made by nuclear. If I don't want a power plant by gas, by oil, I don't use a car for made a kilometer. I don't take I don't put twenty-five degrees in my home, like in my apartment. Because it's the same. It's the same. Well, it's pollution. You are right, and, and, and <coughs> if you tell me Italians are contradictory, you win. Yeah. <laughs> you are champions of the world with, with contradictions. But then it would be wrong to for, forget about what has changed. Um, what, what, what's up? Maybe one um, more comments and then we could wrap okay. up. All right. Um, uh, the, 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 the old evaluation of the thing is uh, up to be done. I'm absolutely open to any of the three narratives to win and uh, I also I don't think that any one of them will win as a one single uh, thought that will govern the world. I don't think that is possible. I think that we are too plural to let any one of those to win the whole world and the whole culture. I just wanted to stress you that whatever we do has consequences. And uh, we what we do is what we choose. And what we choose is very much explained, not by technical reasons, but by cultural reasons, by an art, by a vision of the world. That's it. Uh, and there are so many examples that uh, tell us so that uh, we could speak much more than JC will allow us. So thank you very much.